Okay, well, good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Good, good. Well, welcome, welcome. All right, well, before I get started, uh, I'd like to introduce Michael Wachner. Uh, once again, Michael is going to be joining us with some wonderful uh, original music today. And we have the international debut of the uh, quartet of four beautiful women called the Rev Four. Is that what we've decided on? The Rev Four. All right, so we're going to have a lot of wonderful music for you today. So I'm looking forward to that. So why don't we all just take a deep breath, close your eyes. And just, once again, just let yourself fully arrive. Another deep breath, just. And just release that. Just feel yourself arriving, planting yourself in your seat, and releasing the tension from the week, letting the entire week go, the stress of our daily lives. rushing from one place to another, the demands of our work and our personal life, just, just for this hour, just for this hour, let's make a pact, a secret pact. Let's let it all go, just for this hour. You can pick it up for the, the rest of the day and the rest of the week, but just for this hour, let's all just, another big inhale and just on the release, just let the entire week go. And let this be the one hour where you fully receive. You know, we all give so much from moment to moment. We never take just a moment to to receive. So let this just be the hour that kind of washes over you where you fully receive something that actually wants to get through to you. It's just been waiting for you all week, all year, your entire life. So one big... One last breath. Oh, that feels good. Okay. So with that, I'd like to invite Michael up for his first wonderful song. Michael. Birds fly south When the leaves fall from the trees Flowers bloom in the warm summer breeze Simple but a miracle Managed by design Enlightened by a Gifted from the true divine It's all by grand design 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 Oh, 
miracle of love Give us all from the truth, truth divine. It's all by grand design 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 Yeah It's all by grand design It's all by grand Absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, there you go. The grand design. Uh, and that's what uh, the topic of my talk is today is the grand design. And it's, uh, you know, Michael and I have been working with each other so much lately that it's almost like the muses don't talk to me unless I talk to Michael first. So Michael comes up with, uh, I, so I called him a few days ago and I said, what's the what songs have you come up with, Michael? And he's like, the grand design. I'm like, all right, that's all I needed right there. So I'll start from there. And I'll start. I didn't start at all. I just opened up to what inspiration wanted to come as a result of that, that song. And so as I contemplated the grand design, it seemed very daunting to me, especially since winter won't end. Anybody notice? Oh, um, this is a tough time of year for me, very tough. Um, you know, my daughter, Megan, who's 23, she was diagnosed with, very, uh, recently she went into a naturopath and they diagnosed her with very low vitamin D. And she said, hey dad, mom doesn't have a problem like this, do you have a problem with this? And I was like, well, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I don't. Well, come to think of it, my good friend Catherine Gray always says, this is a time of year when I get this look in my eye and I'm about to end a relationship, sell a house, buy a house, move on a boat, sail away from land. And I'm like, you know, I think I might have some vitamin D problems. And so, not low T, low D, all right? Uh, just to be clear. Uh, and uh, so it's this time of year when I feel challenged. And at the same time, Michael gives me this title called The Grand Design. All right, so I've got vitamin D deficiency and now I'm supposed to come up with The Grand Design. So this was kind of daunting task this week. So I was looking at this and this is the time of year, especially with The Grand Design, you know, will spring ever, I start getting these existential questions like, will spring ever arrive? Or are we just gonna skip it? Go right through till November and start, you know, go right through. Uh, what's my purpose in life? You know, that's another daunting question. Why, are, why am I here? Why are you here? Why are we all here? Um, what am I to do with my life? So as I figured uh, and I contemplated these questions regarding the grand design, um, the uh, stick song from the sevens for, I'm dating myself and some of us here. Um, they remember the stick song, the grand illusion? Welcome to the grand illusion. Come in and see what's happening. Pay the price, get your tickets for the show. The stage is set, the band starts playing. Suddenly your heart is pounding, wishing secretly you were the star, but don't be fooled by the radio, the TV, the magazines. They show you the photographs of how life should be, but they're just someone else's fantasies. So if you think your life's a complete confusion, because you never win the game, just remember that it's all a grand illusion, and deep inside we're all the same, we're all the same. We made the grade and still we wonder who the hell we are. All right, so these are the rock stars. So, it started me thinking, like, who does have the answer? And, it, you know, as you look around in our culture and politics and different power structures, whether it be religion or whatever, it's like, does anybody really have the answers? Does, who has the answers here? And so what that tells me is the culture can't answer this question for you. If you're looking for the culture to, a to answer that grand illusion question, the culture's not interested in answering that question for us. The culture just wants to sell us stuff. It just wants to you know, it has its own agenda. So it really can't, it'll pretend like it can answer that question, but it can't. So before I get into what I think might be the answer, you never know, uh, let me just set the context just to keep the pressure low. You don't have to do a thing, all right? Um, 
My favorite spiritual author, Robert Adams, says there's absolutely nothing to worry about, nothing to fear, nothing to conquer, nothing to win, nothing to lose. Everything is unfolding exactly as it should. So just with that as the context, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to go out and reinvent the light bulb or anything like that. So just, just I think as a, it helps me to always remember there's nowhere to go. There's nothing to get. It's all right here, just as we're, we're sitting here in this room. So with that as a backdrop and a context, I kind of really started looking at this. And the thing that resonated no, most for me is from this author, Howard Thurman. And he says, don't ask what the world needs. Ask yourself, what makes you come alive? And then go and do that. Because what the world really needs are people who have come alive. And as I sit, sit with that, that's the thing that resonates most deeply with me. And I truly believe that each one of us, no, no greater, no lesser, each one of us is a unique expression of the universe. Um, you know, you, we've all heard that to love like you've never been hurt, dance like you've never been, nobody's watching, sing like no one's listening. What does that look like for you personally, for each of us? And, it, and it's different. And that's the magic of life is it's, there's no competition here. What it, what it looks like for me is different from what it looks like for Michael Wachner and you know, everybody else here. We each are part of that tapestry. And it's up to us to tap into that thing that makes us come fully alive. And you know, no one can tell you what that is. Only you can follow your own energy. And that's the thing that uh, I think we're really after. So even Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they ha might have it more abundantly. You know, they don't seem to stress that one too much. That's the one they kind of neglect in our culture. But that, it's more life. You mean more life? A bigger party, Jesus? Yeah, a bigger party, you know. What does that look like for each one of us? Um, my, one of my favorite authors is this Anthony DeMello. And he says, your only purpose in life is to dance. It's your dance. Um, find out what your dance looks like and then go do that. And if people are inspired by your dance, wonderful. If they're not, fine. Be dancing off by yourself in the corner of the room, completely enjoying yourself. And that's really the, the purpose here. One of the most inspirational things, if you ever want to get this movie, it's called The uh, Riding Giants. And it's about the big wave surfers out in Hawaii and how they, it's evolved over time. And there's this guy... Laird Hamilton, who's just been doing it for 30 years, and it was the most inspirational movie I've, I've seen forever. And this guy is not a motivational speaker. He's not trying to inspire people. He's just doing his thing. He's just doing his dance. And it just inspires so many people. So recently, my daughter Megan down in Milwaukee is uh, working for City Year, and she's uh, inner city schools in Milwaukee. And these, you know, these are tough kids. She has a 15-year-old freshman in, in uh, an inner city school. And so she was like, Dad, I just don't know what to do. You know, I, I try to get through and I try to, you know, but they're 15, what 15-year-olds 15 can listen to anybody. And so I said, you know, Meg, what do you want to do? And what do you really want to do? She's like, I want to teach yoga. I love yoga. I want to do yoga. I'm like, well, go off into the corner and do your yoga. Don't try to inspire. Don't try to really enroll. So anyway, at lunchtime in this inner city high school that has no windows, by the way, my gosh, you know, unbelievable. She goes off into the corner of the cafeteria and she starts doing yoga for an hour. She never asked one kid to come join her. She doesn't try to sell. She's doing her dance. And now she's got this following of like 20 kids at lunchtime, 15 cynical 15 year olds. They're all doing yoga in the corner of the cafeteria just because she was committed to doing her thing. Another inspiration for me is that Jack White. Anybody know the Jack White, the singer? All right. So he has two different bands that he travels with. One's all guys, they're all blues players, probably all in their 50s and 60s. And the other is all women, and they're all in their 30s. And he doesn't know which band he's going to use until he gets to the venue. And he tells the bands an hour before, we're going to go with you today. And then when they start playing, he doesn't have a set list. He just intuitively just goes from one song to the next. And he is completely doing his dance, so to speak, from moment to moment to moment. And they asked, I saw an interview with him. They said, how did you make it so big? And he said, because I simply did what, what came to me and what felt right to me. And whether I made it famous and made a million dollars never mattered to me. It still doesn't matter. 
So that's a perfect embodiment example of someone who's truly doing their dance. And it's not a selfish thing. It's actually a very generous Whoops, there we go. Uh, when we do our dance, it's a very generous thing. Uh, Marianne Williamson, she says, the world doesn't need more people who are afraid to be big. Be big, and that's the thing that's gonna inspire people, because when we see people actually expressing, it's like, hey, if George can do it, I can do that. So it's a generous thing for you to step into your fear and fully express the magnificence that is inside of you. And that, to me, is the most inspirational thing. So the question always comes back to, well, what is the grand, uh, what is our grand purpose here? And to me, it is to understand that you, personally, are the eyes, the ears, the voice of the universe. You are its ability to hear the silence of a snowfall. You are the universe's ability to hear a Beethoven masterpiece, to hear the birds chirping. You are its ability to smell the lilacs, hopefully we'll be hearing them, smelling them soon, uh, and fresh baked bread, to feel the crisp white sheets, to taste the French souffle, to see the Alps. If you don't partake in the, what the universe is trying to give to you, no one can, no one will, because no one is ever in that exact spot that you're in when that sun is setting. And if you don't partake and, and claim it for yourself, it's just lost. It's just missed. So um, there was a Zen. So how do we do this more fully? So a couple thoughts. One was there's a Zen master who said, one day while walking through the wilderness, a man stumbled upon a vicious tiger. He ran but soon came to the edge of a cliff. Desperate to save himself, he climbed down a vine and dangled over a fatal precipice. As he hung there, two mice appeared from a hole in the cliff and began gnawing on the vine. Suddenly, in that very precious moment, he noticed on the vine a plump, wild strawberry. He reached toward it precariously, pulled it, and brought his hands back beneath his eyes. There in his palm was a luscious red strawberry. The man swiftly pressed the strawberry between his lips onto his tongue and dangling over the fatal precipice, enjoyed the finest, juiciest, sweetest meal of his entire life. So what does that say to me? To me that says we are to partake, but you can't partake tomorrow, and you can't partake in a memory. You have to partake right here from moment to moment to moment. And it's so rich. And, you know, thank you for that introduction, Pete, but it's not the big things, really. It's the small things. That, that's where the juice is, is in the small things, the very small things. Um, as some of you know, I have this puppy, Zara. She's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Now she's like this big. She's um, six months old. And she is a source of constant entertainment for, for me and my girlfriend, Angelica. And the other day, she, she's taken as a mission to destroy every insole of every shoe in the house. And... Not the shoe, just the insole. She hates insoles. So, so she's tearing through the insoles the other, the other day. And, and it's funny because Angelique is um, Russian originally. So she'll yell at the dog in Russian. And the dog actually ru- understands Russian. And they just had this like, thing going back and forth. I'm like, well, that's really kind of humorous. And um, so for me, I'm, I'm big daddy. I'm big daddy. So I just go, hey. And she's like just tearing away. And I go, hey. And she acts like nothing's happening. She goes, I was just licking it. I was just licking it. I wasn't chewing. <laughs> and to me, it's like, who taught this dog humor? I mean, so I, uh, it's moments like that. They're, they're so rich and they're, they're so um, present in every moment if we're willing to look. So in the movie American Beauty, there's a part in this movie where one of the, the uh, actors says, it was one of those days when it's a minute away from snowing And there's electricity in the air, you can almost hear it. And this bag was just dancing with me like a little kid begging me to play with it for 15 minutes. And that's the day I realized that there's this entire, there's this entire life behind things. And this incredibly benevolent force that wants me to know that there's never a reason to be afraid. And I just need to remember because sometimes there's so much beauty in the world, I feel like I can't take it, like my heart is going to cave in. So, there, those moments, you know, I, uh, once again, 
Another example of this was when I was working for uh, Outward Bound and then Wilderness Inquiry here locally, I went with uh, 10 uh, adults with cognitive disabilities this is a couple, just a couple years ago. And I get in, and they're all, everybody's in their 40s, 50s, and this guy, I get in this canoe with this one guy, and he turns around to me and he says, turtles rock my universe. Can we count turtles? And I'm like, sure, sounds good. So for the next three days, we counted 40 turtles. And at one point, I was kind of like gaming the system. I'm like, there's a turtle. He's like, that's a lot. Don't you know what a turtle looks like? <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> So, and, and another, I mean, so it's just, it's a moment like that. So this guy's entire thing that rocks his universe are turtles. It's not strawberries, it's turtles, all right? So what's your turtle? What's your strawberry? And, um, and then humor. I mean, you find it, there was another guy who came up to me and said, you know, and he, he had kind of a speech impediment, and he's like, you know, uh, we should do a documentary. I mean, look at this. This is just amazing that you people take... 10 people with disabilities out, and it's just amazing that you're taking us out. We should do a documentary. And look at these instructors. There was two 25-year-old girls who are the instructors, and then I was an assistant. And uh, I mean, they're beautiful. Like, they're like starlets. And uh, just joking, I said, well, you know, what about me? And he goes, uh, you, can appeal to, you can appeal to the over 50 crowd. And, uh, <laughs> and in that moment, it's like, is there any better tasting strawberry than that, really? You know, and that, that's what I mean by the strawberry. Is it's everywhere. It's, it's, it's from one moment to the next. So the last thing I would say about the grand design is grab life. Grab life. It's right there in front of you. You don't have to do anything, but receive, you know? You, you do have to be willing to receive and grab onto it. And one of my favorite movies, boy, there's some gems in this movie, Zorba the Greek. He says... Um, why did God give man hands? And it's to grab, to grab life. Life is trouble. Only death is not. I say grab onto life while you can. And then he goes on, and this is very provocative. He says, uh, he's talking to this very stuffy British guy and who, who just, he will not listen to him. Zorba's trying to get him to dance and live and experience life. And this beautiful widow has a crush on this British guy. He says, go to that beautiful widow. She's waiting for you. She's, she is life calling out to you. She is the virgin mother calling you to live life. You won't find her in that church of yours. You'll find her by saying yes to life, by living life. That's the real Christian message. Life is the real, live life fully. And so for me, that's the entire message behind all of this is don't delay. We are literally, literally dangling from a vine with a tiger above, tiger below, and mice gnawing on this vine. And it's up to us to identify those juicy strawberries right in front of us because life is finite and it's to be lived right now. So in closing, I just urge you to pluck that luscious strawberry, write that letter, tell that person you love them, eat your favorite food, smell the lilacs, feel the ocean, make love to life, and life will make love to you right back. And with that, my friends, that is the grand design. Thank you. And this song I wrote was purposely very easy on the choruses, so you'll get the chorus after the first time. It's, the lyrics are easy. It's O, 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 O. You'll hear it. And please, join in at any time. <clears throat> I would love to have you join in on this at any point you feel guided. heart and quiet mind. I breathe in light, I breathe in love, precious love of sweet divine. And in this moment I embrace the power of this love and grace. With all my heart I praise the sacred space. The 
the sky above my head. I feel the earth below my feet. With open heart and quiet mind, precious love of sweet divine. And in this moment I embrace the power of this loving grace. With all my heart I praise this, this sacred space. sacred space right now right here right now so take a deep breath and close your beautiful eyes yeah just take a deep breath and then close those beautiful eyes we breathe with me just breathe into your heart Do you breathe with me? And breathe into your soul. Yeah, just take it all in. And let it all go. Will you breathe into the Yeah, let it all go. Yeah. Will you breathe into the light? Will you breathe into the love? Will you breathe into your heart? Will you breathe into your life? Yeah, just breathe. Yeah, just breathe. There's a golden light And it sparkles so bright Yeah, just breathe it in Just take it all in See it fill you up Let it fill you up Let it fill you up 
Yeah, just take it all in And let this light clear All your worries and fear Let it bring you peace Yeah, let it fill you with ease Let it fill you with ease Cause this is the power of you It is the light of your soul You were made with grand design And you were bigger than you know So just breathe Yeah, just breathe Oh, just breathe Yeah Just breathe Just breathe Just breathe Just breathe Just breathe Yourself a hand, give these ladies a hand. Thank you. I'm gonna have you stay right there. This is another one with very easy lyrics that I've actually written, especially for Lake Harriet, for our circle song. The lyrics are on the chorus, I am. So please join in once you hear it. We are children of the stars, we are made of sacred light. We carry in our hearts the sound of one I am, 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 I am. Yeah. We 
are one with the infinite. We shine with magnificence. We carry in our soul the light of the world. I am, I am, I am. We are everlasting, ever love, forever light, forever love. I am, I am, I am, yeah. I am, I am, I am, I am. I will carry this day, I will carry this love throughout this day, and with a heart full of gratitude, I will pray I am, I am, I am. Rest and relax in knowing that it's all been done for you. All you have to do is find your strawberries, find your turtles that rock your universe. They're not, far, they're not hard to find. They're most likely right in front of you. God bless. Amen. Thank you.